And welcome to Brand New 20 chat show. I'm uh, Olivia uh, from Shoot and Share, and I'm your personal branding photographer. And good morning. I'm Tam, and I'm the brand designer. Together, we've created Brand New 2020 to be a virtual meeting place for small business owners, um, anyone looking for expert advice, hints, and tips on everything to do with brand visibility, marketing, design, and brand photography. Yes, and uh, we would like to say a big uh, welcome to all the new members into our Facebook group. Thank you all for joining us and Tam and I hope that you will find this platform full of useful resources to help you get your business out there and visible. Um, like any live show, we'd love to know who is with us today. So um, make sure, don't be shy, write your name in the comment box and let us know if you're watching it live or on replay. And of course, the three of us will be here throughout this live chat show to answer any questions you may have. So again, feel free to pop them in the box below. Yes, it's great to see your questions and, and, and questions and comments coming through um, so we can answer them in the live show as we're watching. Um, so this morning, we are very, very, um, it's our pleasure to welcome um, Sean Goldsmith, the uh, Special Advisor to Business. And he's also Head of Communities and Training of the Franchise Mastermind. Sean, good morning and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So today we'll be discussing how small business owners need to think outside of the box and be more innovative. I always get that word wrong, but I've corrected myself. So innovative <laughs> is the word we're looking at this morning um, and focusing on their brand and their brand visibility. We're living in a digital world where content platforms and devices are taking up a significant part of our daily lives. We're all being forced to go online. Um, it's very populated by everyone trying to grab a bit of space on there. Um, and we become incredibly aware of the fact that we're being marketed regularly in return. This means that we're carefully picking and choosing the products and services we are using, as well as the digital content we're consuming. So Sean, what does that mean for modern brands today and for the marketing content that they produce? Well, two weeks ago, it would have uh, been true. Um, right now, it's completely critical. So. Um, you know, with the, with the outbreak of COVID-19, the big, big trouble or the big problem that small businesses face um, is there's a mad rush uh, to get online. And, and you're absolutely right in saying that, you know, from a consumer um, behavior point of view, uh, things are changing dramatically. Um, you know, we've already seen it in a number of different sectors where, you know, there's a, uh, quite a nice little uptake of, of online content um, pretty quickly uh, when the companies move to an online sort of context, um, but it's flattening out. And, um, you know, the curve is going down a little bit right now because there is just a mass tsunami of uh, new on -time online re retailers and service providers and, you know, um, uh, personal trainers and kids groups, um, you name it, it's kind of up there right now. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. And uh, as small business owners, I mean, we have to wear and juggle multiple hats. And marketing is definitely a big part of our business, which demands us to learn um, new platforms and new channels, sometimes uh, a lot faster than what we can handle. So how do, we, um, how do we deal with all the above without really getting in the rut? And how do we optimize what we are already doing and um, executing what we should be doing better to better deliver our customers? Yeah, so look, the, 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 the first step over here is actually, is actually take a step back, um, is the answer. So a lot of companies went, went headlong into, into the online space um, through sheer panic, uh, through necessity, yeah. for, for various reasons. Um, you know, but the, but the, the, the key is right now, right, that what, what you have to do as a, as a business is change your mindset from, from a survival mindset to a reinvention mindset that is absolutely mm -hmm. crucial right now because um you know the reality is that you are now competing with the world 
you know, so um, as, as Tam mentioned, I, I run a, a very large mastermind, probably the largest mastermind uh, for franchisors. So the guys who own the franchise networks um, in the world. And we've been having some really, really interesting discussions. Um, you know, previously, before all of, all of this, you had a physical location, generally speaking, or you had, you know, a, a territory. Um, but in most cases, for most small businesses, this was, was a geographical situation, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you could actually put on a map the area that you're kind of targeting, et cetera. Um, the reality is right now that even the small uh, sort of kids franchises and the, the kids groups um, are starting to get members from all over the world, from Brazil, from America, but equally, um, their members are starting to sort of, uh, you know, start using uh, content providers from from uh, around the world. So the, the big issue right now is that going online is just the very, very, very small part of the first step. Um, that's the easy bit. Going on to Zoom is really simple, 11, 11.99 or something, you know, and, and you've got Zoom and it's simple to use and you can talk to people. But that's not a good strategy, right? Because just having Zoom is like buying, you know, just having a shop. It's got nothing to do with your success. Um, you know, it's got nothing to do with what's inside your shop. And it's also got nothing to do with the customer experience. So right now, from a branding point of view, you are in, uh, in, in that tsunami. And you've got to find ways to stand out. And, you know, my, my personal belief is right now that personal branding is by far the most, most important thing that you can do right now. Because, um, you know, the, 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 the maelstrom of, of, you know, just messages that's going to be coming out, the only way to really kind of differentiate, differentiate yourself is by you taking the lead for your brand, you as a person, so that people can connect with you. Um, rather than with your brand as a, as a, as a primary, primary source. Great. And obviously, looking at all of that branding, um, people are now very aware that they need to be doing that and, and sort of making themselves get out there and, and making sure people can see them and get to know them. But at what point do we know when we need to take on a bigger marketing strategy? When, when do we know that something bigger is necessary? Right, right now. Um, and, you know, the thing is that our new reality is innovation, right? So there is not going to be over the next course of the next sort of 12 months, a day that you should not be thinking about innovating and pivoting. Um, and this, this word pivoting is an American, American phrase, but it, it does work pretty well. So what you have to be is on your toes right now. You've got to be very, very nimble and you've got to watch what's happening in the, in the market because you know, it's, it's, it's changing all the time. The, the habits, the things that people are doing, not doing. I mean, TikTok, as an example, about, about two months ago, I got into TikTok and I, you know, I kind of thought that it was a, you know, an interesting platform. Now, since the shutdown, it, Gordon Ramsay's on TikTok, you know, doing dances with his daughter. You know, so you've got, to, you've got to be watching trends all the time right now because I think in an online world, if you are outside of the mainstream, becomes a very, very difficult prospect to be able to, um, you know, kind of stand out. Um, but that said, what you should never do is forget your local customers, right? So, um, you know, in terms of your, your strategy, you have to have a two, two pronged approach and you've got to market as much as you can to your past customers and your current customers and do some local marketing. But equally, you've got to be thinking about an 18 month strategy with regards to your online marketing and how that would work. work. Absolutely. <clears throat> and um, we, obviously, we all need to stay focused uh, in our strategy, but we also need to be flexible. So, Sean, in your opinion, at what stage is commitment, pure stubbornness and flexibility is fickleness? Yeah, again, I think it's, it's kind of right now because there, there are quite a few people who are kind of set in their ways and they're thinking, oh, you know, I'd, this is all going to blow over in a week or two weeks or, you know, three months, etc. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really, I mean, there's so, so many factors at play right now, you know. So, like I said, you know, I, I'm, I'm leading a group of, uh, of franchisors who represent probably close on about 22,000 small businesses. Um, you know, and every day we are wrestling with this, with this particular, you know, question. Do we stay? Do we hold the ground? Um, do we furlough all the staff? Do we not furlough staff? Can we get away with not furloughing staff? Um, so, you know, I, I think I, I'm not even sure it's stubbornness right now. I think it's, I think it's just a matter of, you know, there's so many different things to consider that nobody knows quite which direction to go into. My advice, though, is every single step is important, even the wrong step, right? 
Um, so you have to you have to have some forward momentum, even if it's the incorrect move uh, for the moment. At least then what you've done is disqualified one incorrect move. Um, you know, which gives you greater odds of making a correct move. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that actually brings us quite nicely into the next question. Um, and obviously everyone is just trying to get out there, but there's no quick fix to becoming a household name at the moment. Everyone is in a rush and a panic to get themselves online and get their faces seen and their brands visible. But can you give us some advice on how to build strategies to help businesses create memorable and valuable content that will make that lasting impression in amongst all the busyness that's going on there? Yeah, so um, I think I kind of touched on it before. So the, the, the best strategy at the moment, as far as I can tell, and this is the combined knowledge of, of these 260-odd uh, franchisors, really, um, is your two-pronged two approach with regards to maintain your local marketing. Um, you know, don't forget your local people. Don't get too distracted by your online. Um, but with regards to online, what you now need to do is you need to go back and start looking at people like Russell Brunson and you know, the guys who were always the sort of online gurus who were doing their funnels and they were doing all their bits and pieces. Um, there's a lot to learn over there and each brand and each company will, will um, sort of have a different angle. Again, strangely enough, some of the best advice and the best um, messaging that I've, I've managed to get is by following hashtags on, on TikTok. I mean, it's, it's much more powerful, in my view at least, than Instagram and, um, you know, Facebook messaging, just purely because it's micro messages. So people have got 60 seconds to say what they have to say and then it's finished. Um, so what they tend to do is they tend to give you the good stuff, um, you know, when you, when you, when you follow mm. it. Um, but yeah, so um, uh, the, the online stuff, you really, really do need to sp spend a bit of time just thinking about your approach because, you know, if you, if you, if you don't get it right, you, you can really easily get swamped. Yes, and uh, so obviously uh, keep an eye out for new opportunities is so important for any business. Uh, you've mentioned that we need to be online and we need to look out for what's happening uh, on other platforms. But apart from the online world, um, how do, can you give us any more advice on how do we keep our eyes open for other um, new opportunities? Collaboration is the key, right? So, um, you know, and I mentioned this on, on one of the networking groups the other day. Um, you know, to, to find, um, you know, well, as I've done really, you know, you find complementary services, complementary, um, you know, things uh, that you can use and kind of combine your strengths. Because again, you know, there's a, there's an old, um, there's a South African general called Jan Smuts. He's one of the guys on the, you know, statues in, in uh, Parliament Square. And, um, you know, his, his, he was also a philosopher and he had this theory of holism. Um, which is more important now than ever. So, so his, his theory was um, one plus one plus one plus one equals five, right? And what that basically means is that the whole is actually bigger than the sum of the parts. So, so right now for small businesses, one of, the, one of the best things that they can actually do is collaborate and work together because, you know, their voice is a lot bigger when they are working together. You know, um, you know, the guys who are running lawn cutting uh, businesses and the guys who are running home cleaning businesses and the guys running window cleaning businesses and roofing businesses and plumbing businesses. You know, if they were to, if they were to form strategic alliances right now, uh, come together and basically put all their marketing power together, right, they would, they would stand a hell of a lot better chance of actually making it through. Um, you know, so the wisdom of, of collaboration is, is insanely important right now. Yes, and that actually, that was what I was going to ask you next is about that collaboration, actually, um, and that whether or not we should be worried about what other businesses are doing or, you know, create rules and work with other businesses to collaborate. And that is exactly what Olivia and I have done to, to bring together a stronger force um, so mm. that we can offer more um, and, and, and ourselves be more visible, but also be able to offer a wider range of services to the people that we are sort of engaging with and that are in our audience. Um, are there, is there any advice on how to implement those collaborations? Obviously, we now are aware that we need to be collaborating, but what can we, how, how can we collaborate? How can we find our competitors and, and our, the people that are in our industry to collaborate with? You know, the thing is they're all around, right? And they, it's very, very easy to spot them. It's really, really easy, but it's, it's you know, humans are, humans are funny, funny creatures, right? So, um, you know, the reality is that 80 to 90% of the people watching this um, are going to go, ooh, and they're going to nod vigorously hearing this whole story about collaboration and then do nothing about it. Um, you know, so the, the point of collaboration 
is actually taking that step, right? So, um, you know, it's it's clear. Like, I just gave you an example, right? Somebody who's who's doing, um, you know, uh, say for instance, commercial commercial, um, you know, um, tree surgery or something like that, right? There are a number of different uh, sort of uh, competitors, well, not even competitors, but but um, trades that are complementary to him or to her, right? Um, the the thing that stops them is that nobody will actually just take that make that first move. They, they everyone sits back and they wait for somebody else to do it. But mm. the the reality is, you've just got to have the attitude. If not me, then who? Yeah. Right. If not me, then who? So if you are not actually going to take that first step forward, then really, I mean, you know. What can I mean, we do? Absolutely. And, and collaborating with trades that are complementary to our business is great. But I also hear that there's, a, there's also a trend at the moment, and that's to collaborate with your competition. Mm. How do you feel about that? And is that something that our audience can um, start to uh, look at doing as well? I'm, I'm actively promoting that at the moment. In fact, last night I did a, I did a, um, a talk with uh, uh, the sort of kids fa franchises I mentioned, right? So we, we had one lady, um, you know, uh, runs a, a company called Little Kickers. She's got 350 franchisees worldwide um, and was talking to one of her key competitors on the same panel. Look, the thing is that, you know, no, no, in no industry is the word intellectual property more valued than in franchising, right? Mm. And, you know, the rules are gone. They, they, they just don't exist anymore because, you know, for a lot of those businesses, in order to survive, what they've done is they've started tr uh, transferring their, their businesses online. Um, and the minute it's online, well, you know, there is your in intellectual property in living color. Everyone can see the kind of football you use and the kind of nets you use and what the class looks like. Um, you know, so it's almost pointless worrying about, you know, self-protecting right now. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, customers buy from individuals, they buy from people, right. you know, but if you are going to be uh, one of those people who think, God, I can't let my competitor know what I do or the situation, um, you know, you, you literally can get drowned out by the, by the, by the mass noise. So collaborate, collaborating with competitors right now is one of the smartest moves you can do too. Um, because again, it works on the same basis, right? What you're doing is you're actually, you're actually um, amplifying your voice, right? In order to be, be heard above the rest. So if you imagine, if you imagine, um, you know, those people who are really good at getting attention at a music concert, a massive music concert, right? They tend to be the people on the shoulders of somebody else, right? So that's kind of what you, what you want to imagine. So you imagine that very noisy rock concert, thousands of people all trying to sing the same song, right? But the camera is going to go onto the person on the shoulders. And, uh, you know, if that's well, kind of the best analogy I can come up with right now. <laughs> Okay, so, so you know, we, we are constantly be told to think outside the box. Um, but how do we develop uh, the ability to confront problems in ways other than how we are used to confronting them? My, my philosophy always has been, right, that the answers are out there and they are very rarely in the industry that you're in, right, the answers that you're looking for. So, um, you know, this is again why collaboration and understanding other businesses is, is absolutely critical because, you know, a simple, a simple um, you know, philosophy or a mechanism or a, or a type of service that, you know, as an example, you guys might very, very well learn from somebody, um, you know, who's doing something completely different, like, um, let's call it interior decorating. It's, it's broadly in the same kind of creative sector, but very different at the same time, right? So something that's, that's an interior designer might use as just, you know, the industry might use as just a normal everyday thing might be revolutionary for your business. So your communication and understanding your competitors is quite important. And if you can borrow little pearls of wisdom from them, you know, that's, that's, that's really, really powerful. And the other thing that I would do is how I learned a huge amount about local marketing. So as a franchisor, this is the uh, kind of the, 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 the crux. As a franchisor looking after a franchise network, your job is to understand every aspect of local marketing, right? Your job is to understand how magazines, little glossy magazines work. You know, how can you make them work better? It's to understand that radio, right, will never ever to sort of generate you the same amount of leads as, say, for instance, Facebook advertising, right? But without the radio, the Facebook advertising results are lower. You know, so all of these little things are, 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 are very important. And where I learned most of them 
was by listening to podcasts. So I'd go onto iTunes, right? And I taught myself how to listen to podcasts in one and a half to double speed, right? It's very weird to start off with, but after about four or five hours, um, your brain actually gets attuned to, to these things. So I would consume huge amounts of, of, of information and hints and tips and, you know, all of those kind of things. And I do it quite rapidly and while I was working. So what would happen is I tune my mind to the, to, to things that I, I was not aware of and I would just blank out the things that I was aware of. Um, and that's, that's massively powerful. And if you are from a, you know, a certain generation where you um, are not quite sure about like online marketing as an example, um, or if you've just never ever been exposed to it, you know, there are some an incredible podcasts out there that will effectively teach you everything you need to know. And the beauty of it is the people that are being interviewed, um, you know, they are generally giving their best advice on these podcasts because they're being interviewed. They want to impress. So they, they give away their best secrets mm -hmm. on the, on the podcast. So, you know, it's a very good way to rapidly learn. I wouldn't necessarily go into, um, you know, uh, some of these online learning platforms because, you know, in reality, they actually, you know, they are way too prepared. Um, you know, they lose the crux of what they're actually trying to trying to teach you. So if you if you're listening to people on a podcast or something like that video cast, um, you know, the likelihood is that you're going to learn more and you're going to learn it quicker. And I think I think when people on podcasts too, they're reacting like you are to questions and they're, you know, they 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 saying stuff that's true to them rather than prepared stuff, which they've then mm. put some thought through and things like that. Yeah, yeah. and, and um, one, one, one podcast that I'd, I'd suggest, right? Well, there's, there's a couple actually. Um, so one is called the Marketing Book Podcast, right? And basically this guy um, interviews the authors of the books and you'd be blown away at the insights that come out of the podcast that are nowhere near the book, that aren't mm -hmm. actually in the book. Another one I'd recommend is um, one that I used to listen to years ago. It's, it's huge now, but it's called EO Fire, um, Entrepreneur on Fire. Um, you know, and this guy's format is brilliant because he asks every single person exactly the same questions mm -hmm. um, and they've got the same amount of time to answer them in. So you can, you can go through 30 or 40 really interesting people pretty quickly. And all mm. you have to do is just listen out for the different answers, not for the same answers. Very interesting. I'll get those podcasts from you and I'll pop them in the comments. Um, once this goes, um, once we're putting them on the, on the, on the live thing. So, um, yeah, so I just wanted to touch again, back on thinking outside of the box. And obviously, you know, we're thinking out of the outside of the box. We're being innovative. Why do those companies succeed though? What makes them stand out if they're going to succeed thinking out the box? Um, yeah, sometimes, sometimes what it is is basically just a simple matter of, you know, of, of a nuance. So sometimes it's not a completely new idea, um, you know, but the companies that are standing out right now and the companies that will win from this are the people who basically are, have got forward momentum, right? So, so guys who are just simply kind of following the trends and they hear, oh, we must be on Zoom, so they go on Zoom and, you know, oh, we must have a workshop, so they do a workshop and all that kind of stuff. It's all good and well, but you know, the true value is something that you really need to think think about right now. So, you know, forward momentum is 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 absolutely crucial, and that can only come from a good long longer term strategy. So, you know, I've been I've been working with people on a on a seven day sort of turnaround, like a seven day pivot plan. Um, you know, outside of the franchi franchising arena, and um, you'd be surprised eh? in, in seven days, not well, less than seven days, you can actually come up with a fully formed plan. Um, and part of it is something that I was talking to you guys about is how you, you need to elevate your personal profile right now in order to accelerate uh, your, your company growth because consumer behavior has completely changed even in this short, short period of time, mm. right? And people, people are still buying from people, but this time it's not, it's not just kind of a thing that people say you know, people are actively going out to understand who the person is behind the company. So this is why your Instagram is, is important and why your Facebook posts are important because the odds are the person's going to do a bit of research on you as a person before they decide to buy from your brand. So Sean, thank you for all that. Uh, it's been really uh, amazing advice, but um, we all need to, um, you know, we all can get caught in all the tactics and the strategies, but it's also important to really keep the communication line open with our customers and to understand what is their 
pain points and what is their problem so that we can uh, find new opportunities to solve them. So would you say that understanding our customer pain point is the um, window to the future? Uh, yeah, absolutely. For your current customers, especially. So, you know, keeping in contact with your current customers um, will actually give you a glimpse into what, what you need to do to kind of, um, you know, pivot and, and, and change things around. Um, but equally, you know, the just just trying to look at what's going on uh, just generally with, with consumer behavior is very important. So, you know, again, I'm going to use that American phrase, that, that 35,000 foot view, um, you know, being able to be almost rip yourself away from the coal face. So stop thinking about your industry. Stop thinking about your business. Take a few steps back and just watch what's happening. You know, just watch people and humans um, and see which way they're going and listen to the little words like, you know, my, my son this morning um, that said, oh, dad, I don't want to do Joe Wicks again, right? Now, that's, that's, that's a sample of one, but I can tell you what, if my son is thinking that, there's a the thousand people thinking that. So, you know, is this the time for other gym companies to start stepping up? You know, and there's a thousand other examples of uh, of that, and you know how how you can sort of um, sort of apply that. And they 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 hints everywhere, they clues everywhere. You just got to be attuned to them. And and most importantly, as I said, you know you've got to you've got to stop thinking about your business for a second, and you've just got to look at everything, you know, and see how it's all working and how it's fitting together. Yeah, a very good point that. And I guess by doing that, you obviously will get brownie points for thinking outside of the box and you'll be retaining your customer's loyalty as well because you're being innovative and, and doing that thinking out of the box mm. exercise. Um, yeah, so yeah, anything that you can add there about retaining our customer, current customer's loyalty um, by doing that? Yeah, just massive value, you know, so whatever it is, if you're a cleaning company, you know, give your, give your customers, um, you know, added insights into how to keep themselves safe. You know, if you're a lawn cutting company, you know, give people, keep people advice as to, you know, what to do to, to maintain your lawn, you know, when it's looking fuzzy. Um, you know, if you're a personal branding expert, you know, give them loads of loads of advice as to, you know, how to how to come across well on on video calls. Because, you know, I actually posted something on online earlier um, on one of the networking groups, just saying, you know, that, that this whole um, you know Corona casual um, thing that's going on with 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 video calls um, is actually I don't I don't I'm not quite sure what the idea is behind looking sloppy for business calls. Um, and there's a lot of people doing it right now, especially the men, weirdly. Um, you know, the men are take, taking this whole I'm at home casual, um, you know, very, very, very seriously. And, you know, from my point of view, when I take a look at that and I think, well, hold on a second, you know, five minutes ago, uh, two weeks ago, you were, you, were, you were well turned out, you were professional, and you were somebody that I could, I could see myself working with because, you know, for your industry, you should look a certain part, right? So if you're a business advisor, you should look like a business advisor. If you Gary Vaynerchuk, you should look like a, you know, like a grunge skateboarder. Um, you know, whatever it is, you, you can't now go and be something different because you, 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 you'll be amazed at how very quickly you can lose the respect of, of the people around you and your customers. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I know as business owners today that we, um, we all want to remain visible to our customers and we want to stand out from our competition and we want our audience to notice us. So it definitely sounds like a wise thing to think outside the box and try to be innovative, whether it's uh, online or in your actual business. Um, so thank you, Sean. It's been a, a great interview. Thanks for coming on the, the show and we That's hope that you... <laughs> And we hope that you find it um, all very invaluable uh, in helping you get your business out there and visible. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, thanks, Sean. And um, you can find out more about Sean um, currently on his LinkedIn profile or on his website, which we will include both of those links at the end of this video um, and in the comments. So um, look out for that. Yes, please uh, join us next Monday at 11.30 a.m. when we'll be welcoming the wonderful Steph Sanderson from the Creative Shed. And yeah, thanks for watching. That's been a really great chat. Um, thank you both. Um, and thank you to our audience for watching. And don't forget, make sure that you are visible and you're keeping, keeping yourself um, online and in front of your audience. So, um, yeah, bye for now. Bye. Bye. Cheers.